Hi everybody. Um, I am sat with the lovely Angela Hi. of Yarn and Yarns, who I'm sure a lot of you will recognise either from previous retreats, social media, Cardiff knitting scene. Didn't go that far. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm sat here in her front room today to just have a little chat with Angela and with yourselves to let you know what she's going to be offering for workshops for the Knit Tea Retreat which is of course this October the 20 I can, something I can never remember if it's 22nd 23rd or 23rd 24th oh, put off the screen. Um, so could you just give us a quick little about you in case anybody doesn't know you already um, yeah sure I'm Ange and I am the owner of Yarn and Yarns which used to be the local bricks and mortar yarn shop here in South Wales where I live but um, yeah, a couple of years ago that unfortunately ceased to exist, but I now run my business online. I knit, crochet, weave, spin, and I have a YouTube channel, uh, Yarn and Yarns, the same um, as my social media handles. Um, and a fabulous Patreon as well. So you put quite a lot of content up on your YouTube channel accessible for all, and then extras for those of us that pay. Yeah. Yeah, I try to have a mix of knitting, spinning, weaving, all of the things over there as well. So yeah, and I've been enjoying your um like blog. Well, that was you typing. <laughs> well, that was around. Um, That's but, exactly how I do it. Yeah. How did you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, your written articles on Patreon as well with photos and things. That's quite nice. Yeah, I try and do a mix because um I know for some people some mediums are more accessible than others and. I kind of miss the days of vlogs. I don't know about you. Yeah. It all seems to be video now, and even on Instagram, things are going more video based, whereas it used to be picture based. Yeah. And I quite miss just scrolling and looking at a few pretty pictures and yeah. reading a bit of text. So, yeah, I do try and mix it up a little bit. Yeah. And you've attended our previous Cardiff retreats. Yeah. Just as a person. Yes. And had a marketplace stand and things. Yeah. You were the first year, weren't you? 2018. Yeah. yeah. I think I've been to all of the. Yeah, I think I've been to all of them, like the yeah. in-person and the online ones. Yeah. I don't think I've missed any. But now you'll be ones. coming back as a workshop tutor. Yes, very excited. Very, very excited. Exciting. Um, yeah, we're trying to use much more local tutors this year. Um, and it's always nice to use the local talent that we have. And is very talented indeed. So um, one of the workshops she's going to be offering is um, Beginners Amigurumi. Do I say that right? You did. Yeah. That's not beginner crochet. We need you to have some basic crochet skills, but introduce introduction to amigurumi. So you've made quite a few amigurumi. Some of yours are knitted, some of yours are crocheted. Yeah, I think amigurumi tends to be more the term used for crocheted toys, yeah. characters, figures. Uh, but yeah, I've done both. Um, and yeah, we thought it might be fun because I think you've had beginner crochet workshops. In yes, the past, that was you? last time round, but unfortunately you had to go online, so okay. it wasn't ideal. But yes, we've tried, we've tried that, so we thought we'd just level up a bit with Amigurumi. I don't crochet myself, but I would like to introduce Finn, who is my little stash guardian, and he was crocheted by my lovely friend Ellie, who I know through the gym. So he sits on my mantelpiece in the back room. He's very cute and guards my stash. So yeah, the idea will be to make something similar. We're not going to say exactly. <laughs> not this actual mouse. No, but um, when you look at basic amigurumi, the shapes are all fairly similar. So we'll find a pattern that will encompass some of the techniques. And it's mostly just crocheting in the round with some increasing and decreasing. So um, once you get the basic techniques, um, it's really fun and you can make all sorts of really lovely things. But um, yeah, probably not suitable for beginners, beginners. You need to know how to hold your hook and um, yeah, how to, how to work some basic stitches. Although obviously I will be helping with that. But. Yeah. So we'll find um, a free pattern that's available for everyone. You guys will need to bring your own crochet hook and yarn supplies, which obviously will give you the details of when all the bookings and workshop allocations have taken place. So yeah, you can borrow Filu as a mascot if you'd like. Oh yeah, when we get to that weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so Filu will be upstaging me. Absolutely. Nice. He's going to be the boss. <laughs> um, and then the other workshop you're going to be offering is 
introduction to drop spindling. Yes, I love spinning and I love spindle spinning in particular. So I think um, when you hear people chatting about spinning, a lot of times people say, yeah, I learned on a drop spindle and then I went over to a wheel and never looked back. But I have, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have continued my obsession with spindle spinning. I just love it. I love the portability of it. And um, yeah, so I've never stopped. They are beautiful <laughs> objects as well. They just are, themselves. yeah. It's very hard to resist adding to collection because there's so many beautiful spindle makers out there. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, I spin most days, um, but I think I'm mostly spindle spin, even though I do have oh, a really? wheel. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I don't even have a spindle anymore. Don't you? No, I, I quite enjoyed it, but it was so slow and I never really did get the knack for plying. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I think anything you can do on a wheel, you can do on a spindle, but mm. it's on a slightly smaller scale, obviously, than um, you would on your wheel. But yeah, I just love the portability. I think because um, with my wheel, like a lot of my spinning time is in the evening, I guess as most of us do after our work days. And to set up my wheel, I have to have a different chair than is here in the living oh, room. Oh, you don't spin on your sofa? No, because it's a bit too low. Uh, so it becomes like a bit more of an effort to set my wheel up, to bring in the chair, to bring in the spinning wheel. Um, but with a spindle, I can literally just sit here. And grab and go. And yeah. So nice. yeah, I just love it for that. <laughs> so this will be a class for complete mm -hmm. novices. Never spun before. Never spun before. Never spun before. <laughs> And there'll be a couple of options for you if you're interested in that class. One will be that you bring your own spindle and your own fibre supply. Um, and then for a slightly increased cost, Angela can provide you with a basic drop spindle um, and a couple of different fibre prep options. So yeah, I bought an example of a basic drop spindle. Um, so yeah, if you need one, then I have some of these available. We'll have um, a bunch of different fibres that you can play with on the day. But if you do have your own, um, perhaps you were like me because when I first started to get into spindling I purchased a drop spindle kit and then it took me I think about a year to actually work up the courage <laughs> to get the kit out of the bag <laughs> and yeah. start spinning so if that's you if you have your own spindle kit and some fibre then bring that along with you but we'll have some stuff that you can play with on the day and um, I yeah I just absolutely love my spindle spinning. I've got a project on the go at the moment. I'm spinning some Shetland fleet. Oh, these are your nests yeah. that I've seen on the internet. So I've started getting down to into the rabbit hole of actually prepping my own fleece, but <laughs> we won't make you do that in the beginner class. <laughs> They're beautiful. Um, but we will have some different fibres for you to play with. And the idea will be to get you going on your drop spindle with either the fibre that you bring or fibre that we provide. Uh, and then if everyone sort of gets going with that we'll also have some different fibre preps for folks to play with so I thought I think in your basket you've got some comb top haven't you? Yes I've got some braids of combed top uh, this one is I can't remember which dye this is I did bring the label because I thought it was on the last crafty cat fibre um, and then I've got some John Arben top you may well have heard of John Arben um, and this one's quite fun because it's different colours of fibre blended together as opposed to this one, which is the same colour fibre with different coloured dyes applied to it. So they, they're just slightly different. Yeah, a bit more fun. Um, and the other thing I bought, I spent, I even remember to bring the invoice, for something silly like £11, I've got a 500 gram bag of lap waste from Wing & Woolworks. So it's all different colours, all different fibre types, um, and it's literally the way. So you can see the cut ends there. Um, and what's nice about this stuff is it's zero stakes. Yeah. Like, it's not special. It's not expensive. You can grab a handful and go for it and just have fun playing. So I thought that might be quite nice. Um, I'll bring this with and leave it in the room. Yeah, I've got some stuff like that as well that I can bring. So, so it yeah. doesn't need to be expensive stuff. No. And then, so we'll have some of that for folks to play with. Um, and then I'm also going to bring some other fibre preps, which um, you may have seen before. Um, so I've got these Rolags and I'll have some bats with me as well. So if we get 
on with the sort of beginning part, the getting going with the spindle, then we'll hopefully have some time to play around with spinning with different types of fibre prep, which is fun because I think um, there are some, I, I enjoy spinning with it all, but then I'm just spinning obsessed. But I think there are some people who much prefer to spin with one type of fibre prep or yeah. another. So um, yeah, if you've tried, to, so yeah, I mean, if this class could be, even if you've tried spinning before and maybe thought it wasn't for you, um, this could be an opportunity to come in and play with some different fibre prep and see if maybe it is for you Yeah, um, and you just didn't um, get to grips with the fibre prep that you had. It is quite hard to start on your own. It's so much, my, when I first yeah. learned to spin, I took a spindle class with my mum at Wonderball and there was quite a few of us, um, but we were all there. There were two instructors and it's just someone giving you a bit of a nudge to actually just have a go. And yes, I did actually drop it. <laughs> Um, and then hopefully at the end, a bit of plying as well, so you can have some actual yarn. Yeah, some actual finished yarn. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, and then the potential third work at a workshop. I only said workout. Still in, you're in gym I'm mode. I'm still in gym yeah. mode. Um, I'm not going to be making <laughs> anyone work out, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then a third option, which will have to be really quite limited numbers, so we'll have to see which of you are keen, is a fun with fibre workshop. Yeah. Um, so there are loads of different ways, as you've already seen with some of the things that we've already shown you, to prep your fibre and you can buy those ready made, someone else has already made those up for you, but if you have the right tools you can also have fun blending up fibre and making some of those things yourself. So the idea will be for me to bring along my drum carder, my blending board, I've got wool combs, I've got hand cards. Um, so yeah, we'll just have a bunch of different fibre and a bunch of different fibre prep tools um, for people to play around with. Yeah, and again, that would be you bringing your own fibres yourselves. But again, we would have some that you could purchase either in advance or on the day as well. So we're thinking possibly only five or six people for that. Um, and it's just a question of what people are most keen on, I think, to see if that one runs or not. Um, and are you going to be in our marketplace? Can I ask yes. you on camera? Yes, I will be. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you've been to any of the retreats before, then you'll know um, I usually have a bunch of different commercial yarns. Um, sock yarn is one thing that always sells well for me. So I'll have Opal, West Yorkshire Spinners. Yeah. Um, I've recently started selling Earth yarns, which is a unique sock, a sort of self-striping sock. Um, I'll have, you know, usual accessories and things, and I will probably, if I get time, make up some fibre bats and rollags and things as well. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and if any of you are keen beginner spinners, or even if you're already spinning, you do have your monthly fibre club, don't you? Yeah, I do a mystery fibre club every month. Uh, so you don't know what fibres you're getting and you don't know what colours, but I do um, put a few sort of keywords out there. So I have a theme, uh, but you don't know until you open up the box what exactly you'll be getting but yeah I usually have 50 grams worth of fibre plus some extra treats usually themed to the to the box the monthly box so yeah, yeah. and you can pick either roll lags which are the snail curls yeah um, or, or bats. mini bats yeah yeah as well so if you wanted to take one of these beginning spindle classes and you wanted to support Angela you can always get your dibs in on those as yeah. well thank you oh that's brilliant well thank you very much for letting me sit on your sofa oh you are most welcome and I'll leave links to everywhere that you can find Angela down below um, and yeah, hopefully one of those workshops tickles your fancy. Bye. Bye.